Hello and welcome guys to another video and today we have Northern Rental Car League round 4 at Daytona Tamworth. So after the seat insert issue in round 3 we had to make up some points for the championship. So we've got 3 heats coming up and a final race and um, just like round 1 and 3 the heats are assigned positions and the total of your 3 starting positions equals the same total plus or minus one to everyone else. So for the first one, we start in P20. The second one, we start in P7. And the final one, we start in P13. So let's get straight into it. So here we are for heat one, starting on the outside line now, coming into the first corner. See if we get a good enough start. I'm going over to the middle of the tracks, try and get into that inside line get a bit of a better start so I'm going to hold the outside. Do excuse my camera angle on this one. Um, I pointed it just a little bit too low unfortunately. On this straight now, right behind Tommy Lee. A few drivers going wide, we're going to hold the inside here. Trying to be careful that if I do get nudged from the behind I don't get sent into the grass because the grass is so long and bumpy here that if you get sent into it, your race is pretty much done. But there's another position. So now we're on the back of Tommy Lee. Now on the back of the number 8 car. Coming into the hairpin now, we're going to go for the inside. Everyone kind of bunches up and we get a double move onto the hairpin. On the outside now for this left hander, we're going to hold it on the outside, hold it on the outside, don't quite have enough speed, going to go for the cutback out of the final hairpin, I get a really nice run and I get two positions there. A lot of people were breaking as late as possible into that hairpin, but you do not break um, after that corner until all the way after this right hander, it's this right hander here that you break next. So after that hairpin, you don't break again until this point. So I was trying to actually break early and get on the power early for that hairpin to make sure I had good straight line speed for that section. And that seemed to work quite well, especially on the exit of the, the hairpin there. So now we've had a really good first lap. We're going to try and make up a few more positions. And where I can, try and work with the other drivers as well, so just a bit of bump drafting, he goes a little bit wide, so we go for the inside. Three wide up in front. Here I go to back out, I break early, focus on my exit, and I get a super nice exit. I get squeezed a little bit, but I get a really, really nice exit, but as you see, I just don't quite get a good enough run to be able to hold on to the position. So now into the right hander we get the position. But that hairpin is where I made most of my moves and there we got another position. So right now really flying through the field in our first race. Like I said we started from P20 in this one um, and just trying to go for the moves where we can. Driver in front makes a little bit of a mistake, so I give him a bit of a bump draft. I go for a wide line, and look at this, this is going to be a double overtake. We go for the cutback, those two fight, I focus on my exit, come alongside, and then they don't realise I'm there, squeeze me, and I have a collision. And then at this point, I think we were P6. So it was a really good first couple of laps. So we've gone from P20 to P6 already. Um, like I said, that hairpin, uh, the final corner, just focusing on my exit, we gained so many positions. Because, like I say, everyone was just focusing on break as late as possible and get the move. But they were forgetting that they're not going to break again until this corner that we're in right now. So they were losing all the time going up the hill because the start-finish line, well, the start finish line that where we start, that's not actually the timing board. The timing board is on the straight after that. But that straight 
where we start the race from, where we do the grid start, that's uphill. So if you get a bad X out of the hairpin, you're going up a hill as well. So you really should be focusing on the exit. And that's where we made a lot of moves, is just focus on our exit out of there, getting a good speed up the hill, and then that was allowing us to make quite a few positions. And this is what I mean about the start finish. So that was the start, but the actual finish line and the lap time counter is this line that we're going under now. So that was the finish line. So that's why it's a little bit confusing. So now the driver behind us does a fantastic job to not battle with us and instead work together because you guys can't see it on the camera unfortunately like I say it's just tilted down a little bit too much uh, it's so close to my helmet I can't actually see what the screen set, sees it until after the race so I just had it tilted a little bit too much down but what was fantastic is because the driver behind uh, Amelia didn't battle with us we were able to just focus on pushing and catching the carts in front because there was a group of three that were battling really hard and it was fifth, fourth and third. So because me and Amelia didn't battle we were able to catch quite a bit but Amelia did say that my cart was really slow in the straights because she was almost bump drafting me on most of the straights. Um, but like I say because we worked together and were able to catch the carts in front it works really well. So let's just watch the next few laps and then see where we catch them. Like I said, I do apologise for this camera angle. So here we are starting the final lap 
Again with this camera angle it's hard to see but we've closed the gap quite significantly. The driver behind has stayed with us, not fighting and just focusing on catching this group of carts in front. So I think this was 5th, 4th and 3rd in this bundle of carts up in front. As you see, they're battling quite hard coming into the final few corners here. As you see I'm taking a wide line, they're going side by side up in front so I get a better run. As you see here, I'm looking for the inside. Not quite close enough, but I'm going to go for the gap. As you see on the left there, there are three wide, so I go for the outside. I lose the rear of the cart. The driver behind us gets the move done. Uh, I just leave the door far too open there and have to slot in behind at the end of the race to lose a position. Although the driver there that was really helpful with us for that race, staying with us and not battling early on, they got a penalty and so did one of the other drivers in that group. So we still finished P5, uh, even though on track we finished P7. Um, so that was that was a good result anyway. And again, it was good that uh, I think it was Amelia behind us it just didn't battle and just focused on catching those carts up in front. So now on to Heat 2, starting in P7 this time. I think it was P7. green lights away we go trying to get a good start unfortunately on the outside there which is not ideal I'm gonna bump draft the driver in front a little bit I do apologize about the low FPS for some reason when I've recorded it in 4k it's not really recorded in 30 FPS like it should have uh, so for future videos I'll record in 1080p but at 60 FPS so here I'm going for the outside and as you see I lose a little bit of the grip there Come back for the outside here again, just looking to see where there's a gap. Come down the inside of here. We do get one position there. And then here, focusing on our exit into the hairpin, going wide and then cutting back across. Get the run out of there, another position. But yeah, we'll definitely be recording in 1080p for the next ones because... The 4K looks a lot better than the 1080p videos, but the FPS is just really, really bad for some reason. I, I don't understand why. Now the two drivers up in front going side by side. So at the moment I'm just focusing on my own lines there. That corner there, that, that right hander, I seem to get a much better exit than a lot of the other drivers. I was taking a much later apex. Um, and especially when the two drivers in front are going side by side, I gained a lot in that in that one corner. You see the driver in front makes a little bit of an error. Now this is going to be a bit of an unfortunate race because as you see, the top three there are battling quite a bit, but we're going to get stuck behind behind this driver here. So the top three, if you watch, are going to start to pull away and we're going to end up stuck behind here. As you see, the driver in front had a really bad exit out of that hairpin and I lost my momentum just because I gave him a little bit of a bump on the exit and that just killed my momentum. But as you see, the top three are really pulling away now. But they are battling hard. So I was really hoping that we were going to be able to catch the top three in this one. It's weird, the FPS seems fine at the moment. It's just at the start of the race it seems super jumpy. So I don't, I don't really know what's wrong with the 4K recording. Um, I'm not sure if it's just there's more happening at the start of the race, I, I really don't know. Now as you see, P1 has started to pull away, but P3 and P2 are still quite close. P30 goes really deep into that hairpin, we get a much better exit. And again, this is problem is we end up kind of stuck behind the number 30 and every time we go for an overtake it just allows P3 and P2 to pull further away as you see he's defending 
and all this is doing is just allowing P3 and P2 to pull away. P1's already gone, but we end up just stuck behind here. So I'm thinking we've had a P4 in the first race. So let's just, oh sorry, it was P5 in the first race, P5 in the first race. Um, so I'm thinking we've we've got some good points from that first one. We're P5 at the moment. We don't need to over push, but at the same time, I'm thinking if I can get past this driver for P4, there's a good chance I'm going to catch third and second because they're battling so much. But you're going to see here, he moves over on the straight and just puts us onto the curb. And then I go wide. That one, that one I wasn't very happy with um, because I just saw I had a little bit of an overlap and he just came across, put me onto that curb, which then understeered me wide. And that just allowed third and second to pull away massively. So I know I'm faster than the driver in front, but I can't get cast and this is allowing the other two to pull away. Which is a little bit frustrating because if we had got past, we probably would have been able to catch the drivers in front. But this is just one of those things. Um, so we're just trying to look for an opportunity to make the overtake. At the same time, we're about halfway through the race, and I know P1 is completely gone, and third and second are just pulling away massively at the moment. So I'm starting to think that this might be the best best position we're going to be able to get. See there, I'm just bump drafting the driver in front because he was focusing on braking as late as possible, but. On this track you had to focus because there were so many hairpins and a lot of the hairpins, that, especially like that hairpin we just went through, the exit is up a hill so you need to be focusing on your exit speed, not how late you break. Um, so I think that's why we were gaining so much on those hairpins, was we were focusing more on that exit speed. See here again, we're going to get a nice exit and here we're just going to send it down the inside. I did bump him a little bit wide there, but we finally get past. Um, and now it's just, can we catch third and second? Because we know P1's gone, but we've got, I think, about four minutes to go. So now the only goal's goal is to try and catch P3 or P2. But the gaps are quite big at the moment, so we're just going to try and see what we can do. I did have to be careful for track limits there. I didn't get any track limit warnings over the day, surprisingly, because there was a number of times I went wide on that right-hander, and they did say if you go four wheels over the white line, uh, or more than half your car over the white line, you will get a warning. And you only got, I think, two warnings. But I think it was, first of all, it was if the marshal saw you. And what I mean by that was there was a marshal just where the finish line was, and he was looking, because it's just grass um, in the middle of the track and low tire walls, he was basically looking at the right-hander, which we're about to go through at the end of this straight, where the banner is overhead. So there's a marshal just on the right here, at that post there. And he can see, he's basically responsible for seeing that corner there, but also the exit of this one. So if he was looking at the straight and you went wide there, obviously he didn't see you so you wouldn't get a penalty. So I'm not sure if he just wasn't looking when I went wide, um, but there was a few times where I did it accidentally, like avoiding a crash or you make a mistake and you go wide, but there was one or two times that I did just over push and use too much track. But I never got a warning, so I don't know if it was just I never saw the warning, like it didn't flash up on the board, it flashed up whilst I was at a different part of the track, because there's only one board that shows up, uh, which is this board uh, on this straight, 
So it might mean I never saw the warning, but I certainly never got penalty for track limits. Um, so that, that was alright. Um, I did think they were quite good for track limits. There wasn't really any corners you could over push the track limits anyway. Because there's grass on the inside of the curbs as well, you couldn't really over push the track limits. It was literally only this corner that you could really get a penalty for. There wasn't. I wouldn't say there was really any other corners you could get a penalty for, um, or certainly that I saw any penalties for. This one again is similar, but you didn't really gain an advantage by going wide. Whereas that one at the that right hander, you did gain an advantage if you used it. Um, here again, you could go wide, but you didn't really gain an advantage because it was bumpy concrete. So there was only one really one corner you really had to watch for it. So I think they were fairly lenient with the track limits because um, you can also tell when someone's doing it to gain an advantage and when they make a mistake. So this is the end of the race now. Like I say, unfortunately we finished P4. The driver in front of us was the one that was helping us in the race before. Um, so I think they ended up with a bad cart in that one because I'm sure they started from first. Um, so that was unfortunate for them but good race for us still getting a P4 so we've had a P5 and a P4 so still good points but it was just a annoying that the other driver battled so much near the beginning and allowed the others to pull away. But now this is the final heat and this one I think we started from P13. I'm going to put the start and finish results at the end of each race. I think we started from P13 in this one. So I get a really good run off the line and I'm going to bump draft the driver on the left here if I can. I'm going to watch that I don't get squeezed on the curb too much. Now here I make a bad choice. I go on the outside because it's the only option and I get completely pushed wide and really... Uh, understeer because of the cold tyres so I couldn't save it so I'm down a few more positions and then again I have to avoid that crash and go wide so I lose a number of positions um, at the start there I think I dropped down to 15th so now it's a recovery drive so going on the inside here we make up a position our teammate there is just a few positions up in front with the green green suit and the white helmet Ross Honeyman so now we're just going to try and see what we can do to recover. I've got to get my head down and recover because that was a terrible start. Like I say, there was only the option of going on the outside, but I just got pushed wide. And of course, there's cold, with being cold tyres, um, it just understeered and I wasn't able to, to recover it. Into the hairpin here. I'm going to focus on my exit, which some of the other drivers don't. And I get a double overtake here because I just focused on my exit. A lot of drivers, like I say, was just sending it into that corner and hoping for an overtake with a late break. But all that was doing was compromising their exit speed massively, and you don't break again until this right-hander. So if you had the bad exit out of that hairpin, you just you just lost so much time. So now we're looking for a move on the number 25. Here I get a nice exit out of the hairpin, so I'm just going to send it. Again, I've had a P4 and a P5, and going into this race, I was going to start on pole for the final race, which is where you get the trophies and stuff. So this heat, I really needed to finish up near the front, because the drivers that were provisionally going to start second and third were starting in the top five, so I really needed to get through the field as quick as possible. And as you see, the field is starting to spread out, and it's only a 10 minute heat. So now into the hairpin again, I'm going to focus on my exit getting a good exit speed and as you see I'm going to gain quite a bit on the carts in front just by focusing on my exit speed. And again I'm going to just focus on my line here, focus on that exit, getting a nice run on the cart in front. As you see, a lot of the drivers are hugging the, the kind of inside line and I'm aiming for a, a late apex and then getting on the power nice and early. Again here, trying to get that late apex, get a run out of there. The two drivers in front are battling. This one I'm going to have uh, just hold back. I did think about sending it down the inside, but I'm just going to hold back, wait for a better opportunity. 
And as you see, some of the drivers up in front are battling quite hard. Into this hairpin. Going to focus on my exit again. The driver in front makes a little bit of a mistake. So I'm getting a really nice run here. I'm going to bump draft this driver up in front here. I'm going to get a really nice run. And I've got a little bit more straight line speed. I'm just going to give him a little bit of a bump draft here. And then here into this right hander. Focus on my exit. I go a little bit wide. As you see there's about a group of about five carts now. Six carts, sorry, up in front of us. And the top three or four are all in the train. And um, There was a driver who started on pole who's always very very defensive I've had a few a few incidents with over the course of the season and they were kind of holding up the leaders so that was actually great for us because it was stopping the leaders pulling away and the drivers that were in that top three group were the ones I needed to finish in front of if I wanted to start on pole because I was originally going to start on pole for this race but I only had like one one point more than the driver that was provisionally P2 and two more points than the driver that was provisionally P3, so I needed to finish close to them. So, as you see the driver in front putting his hand up to push forward, and I'm giving him that bump draft. He goes a little bit wide though, so I'm going to go for the inside here. We get the move done, we have a little bit too much curb there on the, on the apex there. And I'm getting a good exit on the number 17. I'm just going to send it into this hairpin not wanting to get stuck behind him again and now we get a good run on the 27 as you see just focusing on my exits is really really paying off on the straights now coming into this hairpin late break go for the inside and now we've got our teammate up in front and I think at this point we are about 7th I think One. Yeah, I think we're about 7th at this point um, so now, our teammates in front of us, Ross Honeyman, we're going to see what we can do now. So, we started P13, we went back down to, I, I don't really know how far back down we went to at that start, but we're recovering now, and we're only about halfway through the race, and we've got through that kind of midfield chaos. So now, as you see, that driver up at the front, who started on pole, I could say is very very defensive and just was just hugging the inside line and just backing everyone up which like I say was fantastic for us because the leaders weren't um, able to pass who I needed to finish either in front of or right behind and because they were holding holding the our uh, rivals up that allowed me to, to catch up to that group of carts because they weren't able to pull away. So it was a, it actually worked out fantastic for us. So as you see, everyone's getting very bunched up and I'm just able to close in on this gap slowly but surely. As you see, everyone going side by side, everyone's very bunched up. And look, look at how much time we're gaining just because the driver in first is just defending and backing everyone up so much that we're able to close in the gap massively. Now I think that driver got overtaken at this point. So now Andrew who's leading, I think he was provisionally starting P2 and I was starting P1 going into this race. And Rathbone who's currently P2 right now, he was provisionally going to start P3 or vice versa. So now we're going on the outside here of one of the T Thistle and Rose Gap drivers and we get the move done. Now we've got our teammate in front of us. Again, I'm going to focus on the exit. Get much better exit speed out of there. And like I say, I was just trying to get catch up to the top two at this point because the top two um, were the ones that were going to start second and third provisionally going into this race if I start pole. So I was really trying to overtake these three carts up in front because I wanted to f finish this race in third or fourth. And now 
I'm going to go down the inside of Ross, my teammate here. Ross is say, gave me a signal to push that he was going to follow me. So that's what we're doing. And now on Lewis McGill here. And in front of Lewis McGill, that's the driver that was defending. So they've dropped down to P3. And our rivals are first and second. So we need to get past both of these at, both of these drivers at the moment. So now I'm going to focus on my exit out of the hairpin. McGill and uh, the other driver very tight. I'm going to go on the outside and watch, watch this straight here. So I'm going to get squeezed. This is the final lap, by the way. I'm going to get squeezed onto this curb. I'm going to go for the cutback. Lewis is going to defend. So I'm going to go for the outside. Look for the switchback. That doesn't work. We have a little bit of a bump draft. And now I'm going to go for a cutback again. And then give a bit of a bump draft. Then go wide. Focus on my exit. Get good straight line speed. Go for the inside here. I get the inside, and then I get rear-ended completely, and I assume it was from Lewis. So then here, I go for this gap, push Lewis wide, and then I get another driver on my inside, and then I see everyone sending it on the final corner, and I get hit. So I go wide, and then I get squeezed into that tyre wall and come across, still P4. So I really do not understand what happened in that final corner. I had to go wide to avoid everyone diving down the inside. And I basically, as the barrier comes back towards the track, no one let me back on the track. But after this race was, was not so great. So I'll just talk about that now. So after that race, I was obviously expecting a penalty for pushing Lewis wide. Completely accepted, that was a stupid move from me. I was just annoyed and just thought I would get a bit of my own back and push him wide. So, I completely accepted. I was totally liable for a penalty. I shouldn't have done that. However, what I wasn't expecting is how his father handled the situation afterwards. He came over shouting at me, calling me all kinds of names. Really, really unacceptable behaviour. And when I s tried to reason and he just continued not to... um, What's the word? Not to be reasonable, I just said I'm not going to argue if you have a problem with me and go to the stewards. Um, because I was stood waiting to get my way in after the race, so I couldn't actually leave at that point in time. And then after that, uh, when we were inside after weighing, because that's outside the track, I said, you, you can't really talk to people like that. And he said, I'll do what I like. So I just left it. Spoke to the organizer. He went and spoke to the uh, the father and said that if it happens again, they will be removed from the championship. But he did also say the same thing as I said that my move was a bit stupid. Um, but at the same time, I also had been hit wide. The thing that annoyed me and surprised me was the fact that he completely ignored what his son had striving was towards me uh, through this season. I've had very good battles with Lewis and good racing with him in BIKC last year. But in this championship, in the roll run at the start, the car in front of him had a bad start, so he just drove into the side of mine, put me sideways at the start so I couldn't pull away. In round two, in the wet, I was going round the outside on the drying line and he kept pushing me wide uh, so I couldn't get past and that resulted in then the driver behind me pushing me wide into the grass and me falling down a few positions. Then in round three, on the straight, he was trying to push me onto a curb uh, on, on the start of the straight. And then in this round, as we saw at the start of the lap, he pushed me onto that curb on the straight. And then, like I say, I got rear-ended in the hairpin and I was just so annoyed at that point that I just pushed him wide. Like I say, completely liable for a penalty. That was completely stupid of me. But then... On the final corner, on the hairpin, um, I the barrier goes wide and then comes back towards the track. So I followed that line because I saw everyone coming down the inside of the hairpin. So I just went wide to avoid getting hit. And then I just, everyone basically kind of straightened their wheel. And I just got um, 
not pit maneuver, but because I had to come back onto the track and they went straight, I just came across the front of all three carts, even though I counter steered. Um, so I was a bit disappointed with how that all went down. Like I said, if he had said that was a stupid move that you did to Lewis, I would have said, I know, I'm sorry, I just got a bit annoyed um, because I had another incident and I accept a penalty for that. If you go talk to the stewards and I get a penalty, I totally accept that. But the way he handled it was completely unacceptable. So after that, I had to focus just on the final race because I was starting from pole for the final race, which is where you get the trophies. The driver in P2 was the teammate of Lewis. Whether or not what happens in this final race is related, I don't know. But I just focused on, I just went straight to my car and just focused on the race. Didn't look at anyone else except talking to my teammate. However, at the end of the race, my teammate said that there was someone from that team pointing at me and doing that uh, whilst uh, looking at the teammate that was starting P2 when I was P1. So whether or not it's related, I don't know. I'm not going to accuse it. I'm just going to say what my teammate saw and you guys will see what happened in the race. So this is the final race starting from pole position and this is the one, like I say, where you get the, the trophies and things. So here we are for the final race. As I said, Lewis's teammate Andrew is starting P2 and then I think it's Connor is P3. So let's see what we can do at the start here. And just for reference, these top three carts were a second faster than the all the other carts. So green lights, away we go. Holding the inside at the start. Checking to see if we have a good enough gap to take the racing line into the first couple corners. Just got a watch for the cold tyres. If I recall correctly, the carts had to be refuelled, so the tyres were extra cold. So now here, going a little bit wide into this left-hander. And here we get pushed very, very wide by Andrew, which is coincidentally Lewis's teammate. And we're immediately down into P3. So immediately pushed wide almost onto the grass and we're down into P3. But because P4, P5 and everyone else was so very close, I thought, well, I may as well just hold back at the moment instead of sending it for an overtake and just wait and just allow us top three to pull away and then start fighting near the end of the race. And we do actually end up setting the fastest lap of the race. And I'm not sure, I think it was near the end of the race we set it. But at this point I'm thinking, third and sec, sorry, second and first we're going to start battling. We're still third. Let's just stay consistent, not make any mistakes, wait for them to battle, and then we'll try and make an overtake. Um, and every lap I was pulling away massively from P4. Because like I say, the top three cards that us three were in, were a second faster than any other cart. It was insane. Um, they really should have taken these top three carts out of the race because if you started P4 for the final race, you weren't getting on the podium unless one of the top three crashed out because it was just impossible. The, car the carts were a second faster a lap. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a shame for anyone starting fourth and lower just because how, how much of an advantage the top three carts had. But anyway, I'm going to stop talking for a while and just watch this race. And as you see, the top two are going to pull away a little bit, then they're going to battle. We're going to start to close in again, and then I'll start talking closer to the final lap. This is about 15 minute heat, so feel free to skip to closer to the end if you wish.
So now on the penultimate lap here, P1 and P2 are battling. I'm waiting to see where there's going to be an opportunity. Coming on to the start of the final lap now, focusing on my exit here. I've got a really, really nice exit. And what I'm, I'm secretly hoping that P1 and P2 crash and we just inherit the win. But at the same time, we're going to see if we can just get a really nice double overtake at some point. As you see, both of them going for the inside line. And I'm just focusing on the exit here out of the corner. Again, both of them hugging that inside. And we're just focusing on our late X's, apexes. And uh, trying to get a good run onto the straight. And here we are, coming into the final few corners now. Right on the back of Andrew. Again, focusing on my exit here. Thinking about sending it into this airplane, but not quite close enough to send it on the brakes. And now we're just going to have to hope that one of them have a bad exit out of the final hairpin. So here, I'm just going to focus on getting the best possible exit I can out of this hairpin here. Getting on the power nice and early, and it works perfectly. We get a really, really good exit here. Coming onto the home straight here, getting a really nice run on Andrew. But not sure if we're going to be close enough. We pull alongside and just not quite close enough to get the move done. So we finish P3, one tenth off of P2, and five tenths off of P1. Um, like I say, I'm I'm not happy with how that lap one went down, where we just got completely pushed wide on this left hander. But um, still, good good weekend of racing puts us to P5 in the championship with four rounds to go halfway through the season. So we'll see what we can do in the next four rounds. As always, guys, thank you for watching and see you again next time.